I thought that was yeah. Go ahead. I thought that was first, Jonah. Well, the gushing part is generally the release as part of the second jhana. So and that is, the, well, Pitti and Sukha can do that also in the first jhana, and it can also last when you're out of jhana. But normally it's tapped into in, in second jhana. And that it generally, uh, let us say, for most students, uh, it doesn't last for a time after time after time. It's not part of their experience so that every time they're stepping through the jhanas, yeah. when they hit that second jhana, it gushes. It doesn't have to do that every time. In fact, okay. they can move more smoothly through it. And that's exactly how it's described is, is that we settle those things down. Just like we subdue the anger, we also begin to subdue the, 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 the outrageous pity that we're capable of uh, allowing to erupt. And I say cautiously allowing to erupt because another way of saying it is uh, to become capable of doing that sort of manufacturing with yeah. all of the chemical elements that you've got at your disposal. So yeah. that allowing that process uh, to kindle and get hot enough that it is like a wildfire it takes off. Um, uh, there is a, a name of a book that Achan Atanisaro uh, wrote that is uh, mind like fire, unbound. Heard of that so one. Okay, so you just become like um, a, a gusher is the way that I'm describing it here. It just gushes. It, uh, and, pardon? We don't want that. Um, how to stay warm. I'm not sure that that's the way to look at it. Rather, it's a better way of understanding the process that you're going through. And that that's a, one of the noted parts of, of the stage of uh, to allow this boundless joy to erupt. Which reminds me of the uh, uh, the wall uh, drawing at Watso and Moke in the spiritual theater. It says, oh, boundless joy to find at last that there is no happiness in this world. But you can see that bound that quality of the boundless joy that we're talking about. So in a way, we can once we see it, learn it, we can actually begin to to manage it, so that we can actually kindle it and then give it to other people. We can set them on fire with that boundless joy. Yeah, I bet. No, but you don't have to have it lasting for two days this time. Good mm, yeah. <laughs> and then let that um, range go back down to just a state of quiet satisfaction. Ah, okay. But there is a quality that we do want to develop the capability of boundless joy because it has enormous value. Uh, and also uh, through that, we begin to also understand, wait a minute, I'm not necessarily a foreigner to this joy, that I've been having it a little bit every day all along anyway. So now that I'm paying attention to it, I'm really going to take over and begin to control it. Yeah. And all of this fits exactly right in there with the Anasanipati, uh, Anapanasati practice, which basically means that we wind up and I know that with some people, they'll think this is a heresy, but that we wind up walking and talking and living our lives in, in, in and out of first jhana, more and more in first jhana. And in that first jhana, that's where we have really good control over that joy, over that pity, that boundless joy that we can create, or that quiet satisfaction are aspects of the first jhana. And our capability is to 
uh, sustain that capability. But I still had thoughts going on. Absolutely. That's the whole oh. quality of the first jhana is applied and sustained thought. So now your job is to actually take over that those thoughts and start thinking the kind of thoughts you want to have and no longer allow the mundane or the um, <laughs> um, ordinary junk thoughts or mm -hmm. worse still thoughts of uh, I'm a loser. This is hard. I'll try. And and uh, and so basically what we're talking about is, is that we speak from a positive can do attitude when we're speaking to ourselves in the mind and we no longer allow ourselves to speak from the negative downtrodden uh, life is difficult. I'm afraid kind of thought patterns that we also have so commonly because we have both on a regular basis. Mm. Now you're beginning to decide which ones you're going to allow to have. Mm. And so that's part of the waking up process is dropping so much of uh, those negative thoughts and begin to control the kind of thoughts that we want to have. That is actually walking and talking first, John. In fact, if I couldn't think, I couldn't talk. Mm -hmm. We could even go so far that if a dude got into second John and somehow decided to stay there or he couldn't get out of it somehow, very soon they're going to bring a paddy wagon and or an ambulance and take him to the hospital. And there he lies with a big sm inside smile, knowing what's going on. But he says, but this is too nice. I'm not going to get up even when they put me in the morgue. <laughs> I'm not going to respond. <laughs> I had um, uh, last year, there were around two to three months where I was kind of like that. And um, it was actually quite difficult to live life as a normal person. Well, we can call it a kind of zombification. Yeah. And that it happens uh, to students who are not practicing correctly. They have the idea that void mind means void of thought rather yeah. than void of certain kinds of thought which is another way of expressing, which mm -hmm. means void of selfishness, because almost all of the misery we have comes from being in a one down loser's position. I'm not OK somehow. Yeah. I've lost something. Or I'm afraid to lose something. And I need it for survival. I need that job. I don't want to lose it. You know. Mm. And so we go around sometimes sucking up needlessly. It does happen. People can actually get to the point of saying, I really need a raise. I really need a promotion. And I'm working really hard. And I'll probably be getting it any, any time now. Just froze again. Oh, it's okay. It went down and then it went back up fast enough that the router didn't lose its connection. Oh, great. Okay. Um, you, you have, okay, no, now you're back. So, um, we begin to recognize going back to that point of, uh, we begin to recognize that we have always a choice and that we have been playing both sides of that fence on kind of a regular basis. Yeah. And so now we're going to begin to say, no, I'm going to choose which side of the fence I'm going to stay on. Yeah. And so that would be then the, uh, that determination, uh, that is quite a lot then of the, um, the, the path, to soda pot. This is, in fact, the, the, uh, the, uh, a, a really good way of, of looking at it from this perspective is this is the second knowledge that is uh, uh, noble, a part of the path, 
super mundane and not held by ordinary people. And there are seven steps on this path. And this is the second one when we come to understand that we actually uh, can manage the mind completely, not just throw hindrances out willy nilly when we catch them, but that we're really settling in now to really be able to control these good feelings and bad feelings. We can actually do that. And when we are actually capable then of sustaining that quality of uh, uh, well-being, that's when we begin to really investigate the, the Dhamma, the teachings of the Buddha, and exactly all of the past stuff that happens, including the part that I'm talking to you about right now, that in fact the next step then is to do a deeper dive into Dukkha Naroda, uh, Dukkha, Dukkha Naroda, down into the Eightfold Noble Path. But this time we take a kind of a deep dive into the second noble truth. And down under the second noble truth of the cause of suffering, uh, we find, in fact, how the mind works in order to wind up in this state of Dukkha. Okay? This yep. teaching is called Paticca Samuppada. or dependent origination. Mm. So that's the next direction that we should head off into. Okay. Okay, is this deeper dive into the Dhamma because you're, you're getting that state of mind that you need to get it really fit for work. And you're determined to keep it fit for work. And that's what's required of that second knowledge. Mm-hmm. But I can come out, not just I can come out of the hindrances, that's the first one. This is the one of saying, yes, and I can maintain this state. Mm. I can keep it. And you can begin to manage those good feelings. And then you're beginning to manage all of the feelings. All of the feelings that used to be out of control are now becoming pets or friends. Mm -hmm. Or allies, even. I don't know if I'm there yet. No, that's how we practice the path. There are seven steps to go for that. Okay. But you're already at the step of having a mind that's ready for and fit for the work. Mm -hmm. of figuring out exactly how your mind does work. Mm -hmm. So we'll go through that the next time you call. Remind me about that. Paticca Samuppada. That's our uh, place to start. Sure. Okay. Well, let's finish this call then, and I will uh, see you next time. All right. Sounds good. Speak to you next time. Keep keep moving. Keep doing. Keep watching that suka coming. Will do. All right. Bye.